Rock News Weekly Podcast, week of July 1st, 2024, Season 6, Episode 24. This week we talk about crypto scammers targeting Metallica's social media. Roger Daltrey revealing he has a complete script and is looking for a director to make a Keith Moon biopic. And some 41 are currently trying to solve the mystery surrounding their original lead singer after he abruptly left the band and was never seen again more than 25 years ago and more. Plus this week in rock and roll history trivia, weekly WTF and so much more. Everything's up at rocknewsweekly.com. Watch us live every Sunday, twitch.tv slash rocknewsweekly and on demand, youtube.com at rocknewsweekly. What's up everybody? It is time for the Rock News Weekly Podcast. Chris here as well as David. How's it going, man? Hey, hello. Uh, we're uh, at it for another week. We got lots to talk about. How was your week this... Are you off uh, for the off. summer? Uh, yeah. Getting... My, wi- my wife is tra- is gone. She's like working, doing a tour Traveling thing abroad. Thailand and Cool. So, yeah. Doing doing lots of... You're doing the house stuff. Yeah, you're doing the house stuff, huh? That's cool. I have to build a gate. Oh no! Keep From chicken, scratch, to keep chickens. Yeah, uh, a to chicken keep gate. Chickens out of the rest of the yard. They nice. Keep coming in. Oh yeah. So that's my plan. Nice. That sounds good, man. It's a good summertime uh, situation there. Let's get to the rock news though. This week we got lots to talk about, um, including uh, Metallica getting their social media hacked by these crypto scammers, and good we'll gosh. talk all about it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Roger Daltrey revealing he has completed a script. Looking for a director for a Keith Moon uh, biopic. Oh. And some 41, something with their lead singer. Uh, they haven't been able to locate him for the past 25 years. <laughs> kind of left the band, <laughs> and they don't know where what he's been up to or where he's at at the moment. Wow. And so the band's like on their farewell tour, and they want to like close that chapter. So they're trying to reach out to him. Uh, so we'll talk about that and more. Check us all out, rocknewsweekly.com. We're live every Sunday, twitch.tv slash rocknewsweekly. On demand, YouTube, at rocknewsweekly. Same thing with Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at rocknewsweekly. Let's get to it. Uh, Some tour cancellations. Neil Young and Crazy Horse having to cancel all remaining 2024 uh, summer tour dates. This is kind of a bummer. Bummer, yeah. Uh, I guess they got sick after a a gig, and I, I have the quote here. It says... Okay, so well, well, it says the current lineup. Okay, so they, um, the group was due to resume touring operations throughout July prior to headlining sets in Louisville, Bourbon and Beyond, Ohana Fest, and a tour um, closing show in L.A. at the Hollywood Bowl coming up in September. Well, they previously postponed a run, uh, postponed a run of dates in May in Chicago, Austin, and Dallas due to the same illness. All of the band's headlining uh, dates now re-canceled on Ticketmaster. Um, so here's what the quote from the band was. It says, The Love Earth Tour has been a great experience so far. Great audiences and music. We have had a blast. When a couple of us got sick after Detroit's Pine Knob, we had to stop. We are still not fully recovered, so sadly our great tour will have a big unplanned break. We will try to play some of the dates and we miss as time passes when we are ready to rock again. So it sounds like they want to come back. They're just, just not able to, right? Yeah. It's unfortunate. Get better. Uh, you know, it's tough with uh, somebody like Neil Young and his age and a lot of the members of his band. you got to worry when uh, those members get COVID and maybe have compromised immune systems or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just re- my wife recently had COVID, and it, it had her out. Like, most of the time, we haven't really had many symptoms, but she was down for, like, a week and was coughing, like, really bad for yeah. another week and a half or so afterwards. Right. It's no fun. And I you couldn't tour with that kind yeah, of Yeah, imagine being on the road away from yeah. friends, family, comfort of home and medicine and things you need. Yeah. So, yeah, get better Neil Young and crew. Uh, another... Um, Old school rocker getting sick on the road. Willie Nelson, uh, the Outlaw Music Festival tour that he's got going on. He dropped off three of the initial shows uh, last weekend, canceled his appearance at the next stop. He did not perform at Wednesday night's Outlaw Music Festival date in Virginia Beach. The show still went on with scheduled sets from Bob Dylan, Allison Krauss, Robert Plant, Solice, with Willie Nelson's son, Lucas Nelson, once again filling in for his ailing father. 
Um, there was the Instagram post here. It says, we expect Willie to return to the tour shortly. Um, everybody else will perform as scheduled. In addition, Lucas Nelson and family, along with special guests, will play his own set, which will include Willie's classics and other songs. No specifics been provided about Willie's illness, so they're not saying if it's COVID or not. The next stop on the Outlaw, Outlaw Music Festival tour is Friday night, Syracuse, New York. So not sure. I, I copied this after or before that uh, show, so I'm not sure if he made it there. But get better, Willie. He's another one that we don't need uh, getting sick and not being able to take care of it properly. So get better, Willie. Okay, uh, Poison. There's been a lot of talk of Poison and an official Poison reunion. And the drummer from Poison, Ricky Rocket, has confirmed this is some of the first stuff, uh, official press saying that this will be happening in 2025. Shout out to his drum set that is uh, has the creature from the Black Lagoon. Seems like painted on his drum set, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, Ricky yeah. Rocket, here's his quote. He took to social media. And confirming all of this, he's 62 on Facebook, wrote, Poison will be touring in 2025. As usual, there will be no backing tracks, live, raw, and uncut, warts and all. Four months ago, Brett Michaels shared his thoughts about their trying to play more shows in the future following their successful 2022 run, part of that stadium tour, which was uh, Molly Crew, Def Leppard. They were one of the uh, opening acts on that. And they say, when we go back, I think 2025, all original Poison, C.C. DeVille, Bobby Dahl, and Ricky and myself do another big stadium and arena, arena tour in 2025. So that was him months ago kind of, you know, wishing that they would do that. And now uh, Poison uh, drummer Ricky Rocket is saying that that will happen. No actual dates have been released yet, but it is going to happen. So Poison fans, you're in luck. It's going to be happening next year. Tenacious D for the political season. Look at this. Uh <laughs> Getting the you, you like this artwork? <laughs> Not uh, hanging out. Yeah, the little ball sacks there hitting the the Liberty Bell. <laughs> uh, JB and KG, Jack Black and uh, Kyle Gass of Tenacious D. Look at where they're playing. All the swing states, man: Columbus, Ohio; Bloomington, Indiana; Madison, Wisconsin; Kalamazoo. Uh, is that Michigan? Yep. Um, State College, Pennsylvania, and they're all the week before the election. October the last week of October so it's all the it's called the rock the vote tour five date tour only uh announcing it on Instagram pretty cool and I guess uh this is a um it's all supporting the nonprofit rock the vote so okay everything's going uh all the benefits uh or all the sales from the concerts will go to rock the vote and then and you get a choose which insane old man to vote for <laughs> right <laughs> god <laughs> Uh, this is a great graphic, though. Wouldn't yeah. this be a great poster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of representative, a little bit of the um, of the choices that we have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it kind of looks like it. <laughs> uh, they were both gray hair, maybe. All right, rock news. Ozzy forced to cancel some uh, appearances over his uh, health issues. Was, this was kind of a bummer to read. He was apparently going to be doing some kind of mad monster party in Phoenix. And they had to back out of their commitment because of the health concerns. It says, Mad Monster Party in Phoenix have to cancel our upcoming appearance because Ozzy is unable to travel at this time. The cancellation comes just two weeks out of the start of the horror and sci-fi convention where a meet-and-greet package with the Osbournes was being offered for the heavy metal price of $666. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank you for all your constant support with Ozzy. It means so much to him. All I can do is apologize that we won't be there. So, kind of a bummer. Um, I'm sure they refunded those, or maybe they didn't. They're just like, no, too bad. We're gonna take keep that money anyway. Yeah, why Phoenix though? Like, what's? Up? Yeah, I don't know. Some of these. Well, okay, so I know that these. Maybe um, that's what made him sick. He's yeah, like, wait, right. I'm going to Phoenix. <laughs> I honestly, I kind of believe that. Um, anyway, these conventions happen every summer, every year. Horror conventions, sci-fi conventions. Oh, it's part of a convention. I see. So they probably paid him, you know, whatever it was, 250000 plus. Yeah, that makes you know, sense. Uh, the, the thing that he was going to do for the meet and greet. And uh, just couldn't do it. So get better, Ozzy. You ever been to something like that? Yeah, we have, yeah. actually. Uh, there was one called... Um, I have posters in the hallway, and I'll show it to you if you remind me. It's the Kirk Hammett's Fear Fest Evil is what he called it. 
Here, fast even uh, where was it? It was in fr- no wait, uh San Jose. That one was in okay. San Jose. Yeah. So it's just tons of uh horror what? film the horror it, films so it's like, like his personal horror film memorabilia he has okay. like original set pieces from like the original mummy frankenstein no way Bride right of frankenstein he's That's got cool. like original stuff set pieces costumes um you know who is this uh kirk hammett the guitar player from metallica Oh my gosh! He's like a a real um, film buff. He's he's into horror films and stuff. A lot of his guitars have like you know pictures of the creature of the Black Lagoon and Wolfman and stuff like that. He loves like old classic horror. So he had this traveling kind of collection of his personal stuff that he set up, and then he had a bunch of metal bands that were playing there at night, and it was pretty cool. We saw like Orchid, a High on Fire, Meshuga, some really good bands. And then in the day, it was a fear festival. It was like a festival type of thing where he had a they had a panel where they had people talking, like actors from movies and stuff. I think they had the guys from, if I remember, it was um, the guys from Rob Zombie's films, uh, House of oh, a Thousand okay. Corpses, House and they had like um, Bill Mosley. They had um, uh, some of the other actors and actresses in it. Um, Sid Sid Haig. And they do like a Q and A, and then there's a bunch of vendors that sell like old old horror movies or B side or like really rare like horror movies that you can't find anywhere and memorabilia and stuff. It's kind of a cool, it's a cool experience. Those uh, conventions are pretty neat. What's uh, what's your favorite horror film? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, modern horror film, I would say Hereditary. I, I really like Hereditary. It came out in, I think, 2016. That one's a really good one. Okay. Um, My kids saw that without oh, me yeah? knowing. They well, did. I, I was at some friend's house, and they're, they're, the son was watching it in the other room and my my son was with him and my daughter was with him oh yeah and then we like came and we're like what are you watching it was oh, like a very God. a very violent like one part yeah where some heads just came off and i was oh, like what yeah. are you guys watching she's like where she's yeah, was like, like a piano string or yeah something like she's that. like i was like, like a piano wire and she's like sawing her head off in the yeah, attic. yeah yeah it yeah. was right at that point Isn't i was like great? <laughs> i was like what are you watching oh my god dude um yeah, that's that was intense. I've seen a lot of movies, and that's but they still said to it me. was they said it was good. Oh, it they is. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's not just like a cheesy. Yeah, you know, it's like, like one of those. It's like Studio A twenty four or yeah, whatever. Right. It's like one yes. of those really high quality. It's not like Terrifier of... two or something. Right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I had a student who's just like a big fan of Terrifier like two, gory, gory stuff, like and that. she told me just a little bit about what, what is oh, like man. what is in it. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. oh. Wonderful. I'm gl- I, I, wh- why do you like that? <laughs> I mean, I like horror films. No, me to too. To some degree, right? Yeah, But I yeah. mean, when it's just like... No, over the out top. Out and out, like... And that, I like it to be suspenseful and, right. and, and like, thought. And Hereditary thought is that it, way. You know? Like, it, it, it leads up to that point. That's, like, one of... That's, like, basically the grand finale when the mom is doing that Yeah, in that, the attic, yeah, They right? told me it's really not that much scary There's some stuff other stuff it. where, like, the kid's at school and he starts, like, slamming his head in the desk and stuff. Yeah. That, was, that was, like, really kind of... You're like, oh, man, you know? It's, like, one of those kind of things, like, real visceral. Yeah. But, um... But it's Terrifier, not... that's, like, the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. meant to, like, make that's you sick. That's just a slasher yeah. kind of... Yeah. yeah, exactly. My goodness. But, yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, the, those film and horror conventions are great. I definitely recommend them. They're, they're a lot of fun. Um, all right. Metallica getting their account hacked by crypto scammers. So, check this out. They actually hacked into their account on their official X uh, Twitter account. And they hacked in there and they made a post. And they the first post they did, it says, Get ready for the takeover. Tap into dollar sign metal, a dynamic new token on the Solana blockchain, poised to revolutionize how you experience events and shop online in collaboration with Ticketmaster. They eventually went on to post about how fintech firm MoonPay, which immediately caused the company's president keith grossman quickly deny any involvement on x posting saying MoonPay does not support metal the hack posts have since been deleted metallica's uh been restored but here's the thing the scam pushed that token to a peak 
of nearly 3.37 million, only 20 minutes after launching. But it soon plummeted to only 90,000. But imagine if you were able to like sell or whatever with the value at that right time. Right at that time. And you knew that this was part of an orchestrated plan. You know, that's pretty ballsy and crazy to to hack a band like Metallica and not only just that feat where they're able to like comp- get their password, do the whatever security step of ghosting their phone to somehow get into that. It's a, it's amazing how they even did that. And then <laughs> to be able to like build the value of what you're hacking into a company like that to like get a quick cash out is like <laughs> it's pretty ballsy and crazy, man. But I mean really though, <laughs> loser assholes. Like, I mean Yeah. It's yes. like what I bet you you know what I bet you they bought once they once they sold all that. They got some Metallica. No, oh. they got some Metallica um, ape NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, Something I... like that. And they're like, this is going to be worth so much. Yeah, and then they got a Bugatti. <laughs> and they're like, we'll call this Bugatti. Dude, it's I black. wonder if these are the same. No, it's different. Uh, I mean, they tagged Ticketmaster, and it made me in my conspiracy mind. I wonder if they're connected to the Ticketmaster hacking yeah, conspiracy yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is a crypto thing so i think it's different but still just yeah pretty wild huh these um, rascals i mean and if you were following metallica you wouldn't think anything different you would probably buy into it you'd be like oh shit metallica's got something you know why would you think anything it's malicious? called metal yeah you know? look at that pretty pretty clever so anyway actually you know what clever <laughs> Uh, Bill Wyman, ex-Stones bassist Bill Wyman, his first new album in nine years. I like that ar- artwork there. Yeah. It's like an old uh, 1950s, like a Rockefeller, or what What do they call that? Norman Rockwell? Rockwell. That's what I'm trying to think yeah. of. Yeah. One of those style of paintings. Drive My Car is the name of the solo album. Or like almost like uh, C, C. Jane, C. Jane Run, C. Jane yes, Run. Yes, yes. Kind of a, exactly. Yeah, a lot like that. <laughs> It's coming out, <clears throat> excuse me, August 9th, 10 songs with two bonus tracks. They do a bunch of covers, Bob Dylan, Taj Mahal, John Prine. So some, like, real influential artists for him. Um, I, I like the sound of that. It sounds pretty cool. Um, says, it's not something I do every day. Uh, I just, sometimes I see a guitar in the corner of the room, pick it up to play around, then something clicks into place, said in a press release for the album title track is available to stream now so <clears throat> drive my car coming out august 9th um from bill wyman from the rolling stones uh megadeth's bassist james lomenzo <clears throat> this is the new bassist <clears throat> that joined the band after a little bit of a controversy we'll talk about in a sec in a sec he's talking about this new album he's saying that it's already done uh and well not done it's being it's starting their, their time on the road is done, and they're starting their time to record with this new album. So it says, quote, We're actively working on music right now. We're talking with Dave every day. Dave really wants to do another record and just get something fresh out there. So this bassist, James Lomenzo, replaced Megadeth co-founder David Elfson in 2022 after he was kicked out of the band following a sex scandal. Apparently he was, like, texting minors or something weird going on there, I guess, she was 18 or 17 and then she was 18 and then it was like a kind of a a blurry line there or something but still they cut ties and uh so that guy hasn't been in the band for a couple years now but the bass parts on megadeth's last album were were done by testaments steve did did giorgio and he says when he joined the band they just finished recording it so he wanted to get his parts on there. He's like, could I, I pleaded, I begged, I pleaded, could I please play bass on this? And like, nope, we've been doing this for two years. We just got to get it on the road. It's done. But Steve DiGiorgio did an amazing job. So kind of a weird thing. It's almost like they took David Ellison's bass tracks off. They had Testament Steve DiGiorgio do it. And now they got James Lomenzo in the band as the official bass player. But his is not the... Uh, it's not on the, the tracks. Album. And so he's been touring playing the tracks but he's not on the actual album so this next hope, album, hope, hope he yeah i hope he sticks around long enough for the next i was album. just gonna say so hopefully this next like, one oh man be, ah, wouldn't that be brutal 
<laughs> you were just in the band for two years, didn't get You're on like, an I album. I was in Megadeth. Oh, which songs yeah. did you play? What album were you on? What album? Oh, well, they <laughs> Actually, see. Uh, <laughs> well, we hope, it, oh, we hope it works out for you, James Lomenzo. I really do. And can't wait to see you guys. Uh, Megadeth, I think, is uh, going to be coming around to Aftershock. Uh, so, good stuff. Nice. Some 41. Okay, this is a weird thing going on. They want to find their former band member who quit the band was never seen again. Derek Wibley, that's the current lead singer of Some 41, right? He's the one on the left that we all know yeah, as okay. the, the main guy. But apparently this guy on the right was the original lead singer of Some 41, John Marshall. He was the original vocalist for the band in their early days, but he left the group after only a year. So he was with them for ba barely a year in 1997, but he's the one who started the group with Derek. And he says, John, he, uh, Johnny Libertine, I guess, um, this new song, Sum 41's latest release called Heaven and Hell, was written about John Marshall. It says, this new song is a reference to John. He was the most punk rock guy I've ever known. And then he goes on to kind of describe what happens here. There's hard to find pictures of this guy. This is a very early photo of him. He's a pretty fellow. It's it's crazy though. <laughs> I couldn't find any photos of the guy. So I'm car I'm starting to think that there 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 may be some substance to this. It says when we were 16, we knew him. He was in this delirium, no plan B. We destroyed everything. He was my best friend. Then he left the group, never to be seen again. Wibley revealed that he has had no contact with Marshall after he left the band saying he's heard nothing at all from the former frontman ever since. I would like a goodbye, he shared, claiming that the last Sum 41 album is his band's way of saying goodbye to their fans. So what do you think of that? I mean, it's kind of hard for someone to disappear this day and age, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say. Around this time, though, when he would have, in the late 90s, maybe he just never joined social media, never did any of that stuff that started happening uh, later in the mid 2000s, so yeah, it, it was really wise, just a few years later. You would have had Facebook or 2004 for Facebook, yeah, 2007 YouTube, and then Instagram and all that stuff. But yeah, isn't that a trip? So what do you think? Do you think that I mean they they've reached out apparently to people that they've known and they're trying to get a hold of the guy doesn't want to be found. Do you think he's like like in a depression? Well, I mean, I kind of wonder like oh the band blew up without me. You know, I yeah, I kind of wonder if I don't know. Sometimes you find out stuff you don't want to find out. That too, maybe it's right? something bad. You, you may not even. I don't know. There's some of those folks I hear about from high school and whatever, and I'm like, oh man, that's what happened. Right. That's sad. That sucks. Yeah. Um. That's true. Go to prison or mm -hmm. you know all those kinds of things that that can happen. And I don't know. I kind of wonder a punk rock guy. That is a good point. He said he was the most punk rock guy he knew, so maybe he was just kind of uh, continuing to live that lifestyle. Yeah, kind of real, real punk well, rock. Well, we hope that nothing's bad. You know, nothing bad has happened, and hopefully he'll hear this, from not from our podcast probably, but from everybody else putting this media story out there. Maybe he'll surface and resurface, and hopefully everything's cool. So Come on, Johnny Marshall. Yeah. All right. This was a, a unique reunion that I didn't expect to see. Courtney Love and Melissa Oftermauer in London <clears throat> just about a week ago, June 13th, first time in the studio together in 24 years since Hole broke up in 2000, I guess. Uh, so apparently they're in the studio. A fan kind of pointed out that it's for uh, Courtney Love's solo album. Courtney Love simply replied yes in response to that. Uh, so that's kind of... It says, please don't, uh, a commenter said, please don't tease us, possible reunion, hope it happens. Someone replied, it's for Courtney's album, and Love replied, yes. So they dispelled a whole reunion in 2021 that was supposed to happen. And she says, recently, we're all really good friends. Melissa and I are especially close. But Eric, the drummer, is kind of off the grid right now. I think he's in Japan literally becoming a monk. <laughs> so... It's funny how there's always like one member of the band that's like off the grid the doing monk. their own thing, yeah. you know. So we'll see what uh, surfaces with that. That's good that maybe they're that's what uh, Johnny Marshall is doing. <laughs> a monk in Japan? Yeah, maybe he's a yeah. monk in Japan. You'd never find him there. All right, this was interesting, man. Wedding proposal. It's the most romantic thing ever during Limp Biscuits festival set in the mud. This couple. Dude. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> you want to see the video? Limp Biscuit is having such a revival right now. They are. Uh, I told so. you I, my students are saying they love Limp Biscuit. Yeah, isn't that crazy? They, they just love them. <laughs> They're a lovable group. They are. They you are. Know? So let's watch this video. Uh, I, I don't. There's no audio, really, guys. It's just Limp Biscuit's uh, audio. Is it the the nookie or the cookie? Oh, it's break stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Perfect song. It's yes. Very romantic song. Very romantic. Uh, so yeah. So I'm gonna play the video for you. I'm not gonna play the audio just because the uh, I'll talk over it. The audio I would get uh, flagged on probably for. Um, DMCA. So anyway, don't want to bore you guys with that. Let's just play the video. Here it is. Enjoy. This is from user Mitch the Uwu. On what we gonna do it tonight? Just like we do it every night. In 1999. Okay, so I'm just gonna mute it. And so he has his friend filming her from behind. He's down on one knee in the mud. They're both uh, heavily tatted, heavily dirty. Uh, they got their mud boots on. Uh, she says yes. She's nodding yes. And uh, it's it's funny. He's he's real excited, but she's getting very emotional. And uh, how that, sweet! I think that's a that's pretty cool. She's uh, she's very emotional about it. They're hugging, and uh, Limp Biscuits breaks up. <laughs> Playing in the background, how romantic! Right? Yeah, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> to each their own. They're they're Very perfectly romantic. happy couple here. As he puts the ring on. Fucking face tonight. Give me some right. But right, perfect timing right to time, put, the, yeah. put the ring on there. So, how romantic! Congrats. Yeah, good for them, man. You could tell. Okay, another funny thing. Well, maybe not so funny. I wonder if these things, I, I see them from time to time, and the guy thinks it's a great idea. And what I if wonder if, like, the, oh, if the girl's on. like, really. And I think that's why she got so emotional, because those things are very emotional, uh, especially for the women being proposed to. And for a guy to kind of do it in a in a way like that, I just hope that it was felt by her in that same type of way like yeah oh i'm glad you're doing it like this way it's gonna be memorable you know yeah not yeah. like oh my god i can't believe that you're doing this here in the and everyone's gonna know what do you think do you think she was uh on board or made the best of it i have to say she looked to me like limp biscuit was probably something very important to her <laughs> i think so i think you're right i think he made the the right call here they yeah. they seem like two peas in a pod, so I think I think he knew what he was doing. Though I will say I don't know if his <laughs> I don't know if his well I I have to see him with his hat off. Yeah, why? What do you mean? Just I don't know if his if he can match her. <laughs> like in she's intensity? got the she's got the whole thing going. I know. She has yeah. like the undercut and the braid. Yeah, side of the head. The, like those gauges. Well, his gauges are bigger than hers. Those ones will. Hang like a oh, man. Malaysian headhunter. <laughs> well, congrats to the newly engaged couple. Uh, there you go. In memoriam this week, Shifty <laughs> Shell Sorry, I should laugh. <laughs> well, you know, it's a name, man. I don't know what it is. A Shifty Shell Shock is just like... Shifty Shell Shock. You're saying it could be a Bowser uh, villain on Mario. Shifty <laughs> Shell Shock. Like Bowser's, uh, you know, av uh, avant-garde rocker cousin. Yep. Shifty yep. Shell Shock. No, poor dude, though, man. 49 years old. His name was Seth Binzer. Uh, passed away at his home. It's still under investigation, which leads me to believe there's some uh, some drugs involved. They haven't made the official announcement yet, but just Didn't he sad. have, like, some... Uh, didn't we say he had, like, some sex, like, offense in his record or something like that? I don't know if he did or not. There was someone sure. else in the band? Yeah, uh, it could have been. I mean... I, should, I mean, shoot, I should know before I say something like that. Uh, he struggled with substance abuse throughout much of his life, eventually appearing on VH1 Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, VH1 Sober House. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> okay, probably not then. No, I, I don't think so. I, as far as anything, you know, sexual or anything like that, I don't think there were any allegations that I'm aware of. I don't know. Maybe there, I there thought could we have were been. talking about it, something about it the other week. But I could've, don't remember it what it been. was. I'm not sure, man. 
Or maybe um, it was something else, but we I remember we kept bringing up Butterfly. Yes, that was their Butterfly. hit. Butterfly. 2001, number one, man. Number one hit, 2001. Anyway, RIP Shifty Shell Shock, man. 49 years old, too young to die, no matter what the case is. All right, we got some birthdays. Let's get to it. Alrighty, Mike Kroger of Nickelback. Uh was born in 1972 on the 25th. Nathan Followill of Kings of Leon was born in 1979 on the 26th. Colin Greenwood of Radiohead was born in 1968 on the 26th. Mick Jones of The Clash was born in 1955 on the 26th. Yep. Colin Hay of Men at Work was born in 1953. On the 29th, Tom Drummond, Better Than Ezra, was born in 1969 on the 30th. Adrian Wright of Human League was born in 1956 on the 30th. And my gosh, are those his, is that his real eye color? Yeah, they're like piercing that blue eyes, just, huh? Good gosh, that's it's incredible. I think it's because he's wrapped up that they've actually turned to frozen ice from where he's at here. He's probably been sitting outside for a millennia. And those are actually like the White Walker's eyes. I kind of wonder now, like that whole <laughs> his whole his songs are like a cover or something. He's like, right. we're only human. I'm not human. At he's all. like, I'm actually a <laughs> demon or an alien. I'm yes, really yeah. alien. alien yeah. I, I never alien. make mistakes. <laughs> Hal Linz of Dire Straits. Was born in 1953. Yep, that little clamp it. Um, Stanley Clark of uh, Stanley Clark, born in 1951. Yeah, he was uh, awesome bassist, bass player. Yeah. Uh, Return to Forever, uh, some other great great bands, really good stuff. He always collaborated with John Luke Pawnee. Really good bass player. All right, uh, what do we got? I think that's it for birthdays. Trivia time. Let's get to the trivia. This week in rock and roll history. Trivia. For some trivia. This week, June 30th, 1977, this band released a comic book with a vial of their blood mixed into the ink used in the comic. What band was it? Was it Black Sabbath? <clears throat> was it Kiss? Was it the Sex Pistols? Or was it Comic Book Crosby? In his cosmic cocaine free basing adventures. <laughs> I think there was only one one episode of that. Just one, one comic. Episode. Just one comic. Didn't Had a do very well. tra- a tragic ending. Yeah. <laughs> very very <laughs> tragic ending at the end of it. Uh I think it's KISS. <laughs> they seem very comic booky. Comic booky, you are absolutely correct on this man. Yeah. It was actually their biggest selling comic of all time for quite some time. Um so yes. This happened June 30th, 1977. Here's a picture of the Kiss comic. Uh, It says, so here's the deal. Uh, Kiss's appearance, Marvel comic book, not their first. They actually appeared in issues of Howard the Duck in earlier that year. Remember that comic? (laughs) Their first appearance, though, they they were known as the Demon, the Star Child, the Spaceman, and the Catman in a storyline that sees them battle against Doctor Doom. It is published in a larger magazine format, regular regular than the regular comic book size. And so here's the here's the deal. This is what they do. They arrange for vials of their own blood to be mixed in with the ink used to produce the comic. The blood was actually drawn during a concert at New York's Nassau Coliseum, February 21st, 1977. It was then mixed with the production ink in the presence of a, pub, a public notary at the Borden Ink Plant in Depew, New York, May 26th. So they did it in front of a public notary to to have the legitimacy there. Blood and, uh, has been mixed. Yes. <laughs> and then so Marvel Comics Super Special Number 1 becomes Marvel's biggest selling comic. Finally knocked off the top spot in 1990 by Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man Number 1. The Super Special series runs until 85 for 41 issues. They covered the Beatles, Star Trek, Indiana Jones, Santa Claus, and a bunch of other hot topics, I guess. Pop culture things. So anyway, there you go. Yes, kiss there. Look there's the at cover. That. Marvel Comics Super Special. 
All right. <laughs> New album's out. Okay. What do we got, David? We got um, Alex Alexis on Fire, live, born and raised, 2022. Yeah, I kind of like. Look how it's like a Saint Catherine. Makes it look Ontario. like it's an album from the 60s. Yeah, that's 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 a nice looking one. Kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. The old font and the pictures of the band live. I like that style. So, right on. What else do we got here? Uh, Anvil, one and only. That's right, Anvil. And that has a. That's definitely got the Master P vibe. <laughs> Just the anvil the on the anvil, stage, with and the there's spotlight. like the sparky, the sparking, like, lights yes, coming from the ting. The the V is like the metal on metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. If you've never seen that documentary, the story of Anvil, it's pretty cool. Oh, and, really? Yeah, like the lead singer is like a guy. I can't remember where he works. He works at some like humdrum job, like a. He's like a mechanic or a cook or something. Really? And he goes on this like world tour. Uh, the Anvil band was like popular in the '80s originally, and they just like went nowhere. But they've become a cult classic. Like a like a you know, a lot of the metal fans like really like that those two albums they put out. But they didn't they didn't sell well. They didn't, they didn't do well. Continue at the time. really. Uh. But 20, 30 years later, they're having like this resurgence, and it's a fun kind of thing like he's still just working his regular job and he goes on this world tour and it's pretty cool hey that's way cool yeah i like that it's the story of anvil so check it out it's called the story of I anvil think so yeah the story of anvil oh um where yeah. could you where could you find that you think i think it's on netflix or um any of the streaming services that are out there i'll have to check it out okay and that uh, sounds see. interesting but yeah uh, uh yeah. chaser small victories yeah, I wonder if this is like a reggae group or something. I don't know. I like the artwork, though. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Reminds me of like slightly stupid artwork from the 90s kind of thing. Reminded me of that Longest Barrel Ride album from Slightly Stupid yeah. that I had uh, around that time. Very ocean, always ocean-oriented. Uh, Crystal Viper, The Silver Key. I like a Cthulhu Lovecraftian kind of thing yeah. going on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so cool. That's cool. I like how it has a little scepter in its tentacles. That's the silver key. That's the key. That's the key, man. So, <laughs> what doors can it open? <laughs> I wonder. That's like a cool copper vinyl. Yeah, I that like is the way that looks. All right. Sorry, I'm the, I'm getting lost in looking at that and thing, that trying to figure out where its mouth is and stuff. Like, what is it? Well, exactly? It looks like it's got a couple mouths. Is that the mouth, or is that like? Then it looks like up at the top, it almost looks like a human figure, you know? Because uh -huh. then it becomes legs and a head up there. That's <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Eternal. <gasps> Can't say that one. <laughs> Skinwalker. Skinwalker. Oh, my daughter would get so mad at me if I said that in front of her. Skinwalker. Skinwalkers. Um, <clears throat> that's a pretty cool looking album. Yeah, cool, cool artwork, cool yeah. uh, album. I guess I don't know anything about. Looks them, very but... um, scientific. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Xies, closure. Hmm. Yeah, I guess just sitting in the alleyway playing your guitar. Yeah. I'm all alone in the alley. Yeah, but also playing he's like disintegrating. Guitar. He's like blowing away like leaves. You notice that? Like in the light, the part yeah. that's touching, touched oh, by light. Oh. So he's what a vampire. exactly is that all about? No, if he was a vampire, then he would just sparkle a little bit. Oh, okay. When the light touches him. He's a on digital his vampire. On his so he's chest. pixelated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, this, the they concepts. Getting into the lore. This getting really into the lore This is really like deep into the concepts. Um, Ill disposed in chambers of sonic disgust. <laughs> That's a good one for that's the kids. Good, yeah, throw that one on the family trip down. Are to you guys Legoland. in Chambers of Sonic Disgust yeah, you right now? Hear the new Ill Disposed in Chambers. Yeah. Of... I went to the Superfly yeah, yesterday, Dad. and there was a guy who had all kinds of metal albums. I wonder. I think oh, yeah? he had an Ill Disposed. Oh there. yeah, yeah. I, I know. Uh, Craig was telling me about that guy. Yeah, he had a whole I've bunch. I've heard that they're very overpriced, though. Very like, Really? Yes. And I was like, because I was like, do you have any hardcore in here? He's like, no, only metal. These are the overflow of my personal collection. Or the, I don't know what he called it. Yeah. He said some word, and I was like, oh. So it was basically like he bought like, 
a bunch a of a bunch yep. of extra ones, and then he just had these to sell. Yep. I was like, wow, because it was a lot. A lot of people don't really like that in the community if we're being honest about it because a lot of it's like you a lot of those guys poach variants and different things like that and then try and resell it for extreme resell prices. it's like the it's like the korean kids selling tennis shoes right <laughs> yes just three like thousand yeah, dollars for like, like it. some tennis shoes that should just be five bucks a hundred dollars or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah yeah that's my that's a good analogy my, i like it yeah all right. Nothing more, carnal. Oh no! Well, alien. Yeah, the uh, statue got the shot by a golden some arrow. Arrows. It's a golden arrow, and he's bleeding golden blood. Is it, yeah, and then you can poop? also see there's the skull underneath. That's right. The eyeball hole. The eyeball oh yeah, socket. it is a hole. Yeah. I thought it was like an eye patch or That's something. That's pretty metal there. Yeah. Nothing more. They must be. Um, it must be from Sweden because of the way the O is. Yeah. Has the, the lines yeah. through the O. <laughs> he writes this way. <laughs> All of our band members, Søren and Klaus. Uh, let's see. White Stones, Memoria Viva. Hey, lots of arms there. Looks kind like of galloping, a, gallivanting. Speaking of, pie, uh, speaking of hereditary, it reminds me of when they're looking in the book. And they're trying to find what demon they're worshiping, and they find that it's Paimon. Paimon! Oh yeah, you told me about yeah. that. Yeah, and so like it's actual lore, and it's based in real. Like a goat. It's like demon? a real. Well, it's like he's no, he's like this trickster. He's like um, he's, he's like, like a... he's the god or the the demon of like wealth and uh, some other things. Like, and he's like it, his persona is like this like kind of. I don't kind know, of to a, me, it looked like jester, a jester, yeah, like, like an a evil jester. jester. That's the way it thing. kind of looked at. Yeah, this is me, a kind know? of a jester vibe, doesn't it? Right, a little a bit. A fawn, a fawn jester vibe. I like that, and it and it's a very simple. Yeah, I like the the just the sketch there, like and then the and sketch, sketch over there. I nice like little, the vinyl too. It's very uh, kind of disturbing, to be honest <laughs> with you. Yeah, it's very purposeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. Oh, here we um, go. You're Wraith, this. fueled by fear. Whoa, dude, are those missiles? Those are missiles. So this dude. is all looks like all the the madness in his mind of yeah. war, and it looks like the Grim Reaper and death. Look at the skull, dude. I'm down with this album. This yeah. one looks cool. Wraith. It's that it, man. Look at that. It reminds me of just Iron that Maiden's, feeling, uh, that fear of shoot. That's. I don't know, we have to get too political right now, but they did a survey a few years ago which country people are most scared of, and they said most countries said the U.S. Right. It's like, because we're always pointing our missiles everywhere. Cause, yeah, because we're the missiles. biggest, baddest, and we're, like, the most unhinged at times, it seems, yeah. a lot of the times. Look at that, and those missiles. Ah, where are they from? I have to look them I up. I don't know. I'm not sure where Wraith is from. Interesting. But cool vinyl uh Yeah, well, that's what well. makes me think, because then they got on the vinyl, it's like a... Looks like a map, right? It's like a continent oh, yeah, with, yeah. The, with the oceans there, and then it's all this missile. It's a very geopolitical kind of a kind of a presentation. It makes me wonder. And this is also kind of a little homage to Iron Maiden's "Peace yeah, of Mind," yeah. which has Eddie like almost in the same exact kind of position here uh, in the insane uh, padded room, yeah, with the same type of deal. So they should have cool. just copied exactly. <laughs> no. Like that rapper. Oh yeah, like that rapper. That rapper is God, just copied dude. it exactly, but put like some. Yeah, some what did dreadlocks. he do? He put like mummy tape. No, he put dreadlocks in the in the, in in the mummy, the mummy yeah. tape, and gold teeth. <laughs> gold teeth. Fuck. Very good. All right, good stuff there from Wraith. All right, and then we got X Cops, X Cab. Yeah, X Cops, X Cab. Okay. Know. Picture of an so, alley. So maybe I guess not all cops are bastards, or it's like an X on the cops because they because you the A cab is crossed out and that's right. all cops are bastards. So yeah, not all cops. So X and not maybe not all cops are bastards. Maybe these this is like X. Maybe those guys, just those guys, just them, just X cops, <laughs> right? There I wonder. Go. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, okay, movie, TV, entertainment news. That was the last of the albums. Roger Daltrey. Um, so he's on his solo tour. And he's doing press, and he revealed that he has apparently 
a, a script that's it's written here for this uh, biopic. So Daltrey says they aren't that far along in the creative pro- process for stars to sign on. He says we have a script. We're checking out directors, trying to get the best available director, because all the good ones are always working. I've got to find good people with the time to make this film. I want to get that made when I'm still alive to promote it, so that's taking up quite a lot of my time. So the director is what we're waiting for, and we'll move forward from there. Daltrey has watched some recent music biopics with disdain taking notes about what I don't want to do. I've seen some of the others. I'm not trying to make that kind of biopic. I'm making a film. Well, so, he didn't like the I wonder, Weird Al Yankovic. I, I wonder which one he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wonder because there was a couple. There's, there's been, a, been Elvis, a couple um, of Elvis, Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury. Um, so I wonder what which one he's kind of referencing there, giving the little slight to. But that does sound cool. I mean, Keith Moon, a legendary drummer, a crazy life that he lived. Like it's like the stuff of rock and roll legend. So I would be all on board with getting this done by somebody as close to him as Roger Daltrey was uh, to, to lead the way, right? Yeah. So, yeah, right on. Well, let's let's get it done. Oh, yeah, did you hear about the new uh, Yo Gabba Gabba Land? I did not. So, But you know, I am now here. Yes, yes. Well, that's what we're here for. And a lot of rockers are going to be on it, including Flea, Kurt Vile, The Interrupters, and more. They're going to be special guests on Yo Gabba Gabba Land, which is coming <laughs> to Apple+. Plus. <laughs> On August 9th, they're going to have Anderson Pack, Portugal the Man, uh, Thundercat, uh, Betty, Betty Who, Who, the Linda Lindas, Miyavi, I'm not sure on that one, Corey Wong, Antoine Stanley, Kurt Vile, the Drums and the Interrupters. They're all going to perform songs on Yo Gabba Gabba Land that reinforce the specific themes of each episode. Special guest appearances will be made by Flea, Diplo, Reggie Watts, Big Daddy Kane, and more. Host Cammy Cam will once again join the beloved characters. I'm not going to say all these. <laughs> Broby, Fufa, Muno, Tootie, and Plex. All your favorites. <laughs> but I think that's cool. Now, so. I like that. It's, that's cute. Yeah. Now, the thing that I'm wondering is how long is it going to take for, like, you know how they, uh, who was it, Kid Rock <laughs> is all mad about the, the trans thing from right. Bud Light. This this is gonna be yeah, like on know, Fox News. I didn't think about real it that quick. way. That is a good point. They're gonna be like, oh, flee, flee is a, in the secret messages that are right coming through. Messages. With look at that, Tinky Winky yeah. and Lala. They've got no, their it's Broby, Fufa, Muno, Tudi, and Plex. yeah. If you play it backwards, it says worship <laughs> Satan, children. <laughs> Give in to Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, well. I almost bought the White Album yesterday. Check that out. <laughs> okay, this is great. This is a great way to end it. Have you seen this ad yet with Ozzy and Liquid Death? No. Oh, my God. Very you, you good. You guys are in for a treat. Ozzy films this new ad warning kids not to snort Liquid Death. <laughs> so Liquid Death, <laughs> this marketing of this company, man. Is, is fantastic. They have this new electrolyte drink mix. It's called Death Dust, right? Death so, of course, they got Ozzy, none other than the Prince of Darkness, to do this to help get their message across. Don't snort it. So he gives some kids some friendly advice on how to use uh, Death Dust from Liquid Death. So are you ready to see the commercial? I'm ready. All right. So check this out, guys. I will play the audio on this one because uh, I, I don't think we, we have to worry about it. So. You're just helping them advertise. Yeah, right? So here's we some... Uh, nothing in return. Here's Ozzy on Liquid Death, or with Liquid Death, for their new Death Dust. So let me uh, switch to the capture here so you guys can check this out. Uh, where's the video? Here we go. Death Dust. Let's watch it, guys. Enjoy. Here's Ozzy's new commercial with Liquid Death. Hey, kids! No way! Ozzy Osbourne. Death Dust, take it from me. Don't snort that stuff. We, we were planning on snorting it. Yeah, we're going to mix it with water and hydrate. It's got electrolytes, which your body needs. Yeah, it's delicious. Whatever you do, don't try freebasing it. Free what? And never, ever <laughs> inject it. And how would we even... And don't even think about boofing it, you little <laughs> pervert. Boof? You know, where you stick it up your own. <laughs> <laughs> Peeling out. Get out of the way. 
shaking up. Isn't that yeah. great? Dude. Aussie commercials. I know. He's right? always he's always some good commercials, eh? He's such a he's such a treasure, Aussie. He is a treasure. Uh that that great that was such a funny ad. There's like so many little Don't funny. even speak. Boof? Don't try to boof. What is boof? <laughs> you little perverts. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff from Ozzy. All right. Get better, Ozzy. I know you had to cancel out appearances we were mentioning, but that's it for us this week, guys. All right. Uh, tune in every week. Rocknewsweekly.com. Watch us on demand. YouTube.com at Rocknewsweekly and live. Twitch.com slash Rocknewsweekly. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. All right. Peace. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>